Hi, it's Christmas. I thought I'll be seeing more Santa stuff towards Christmas, but no, in reality, my feet is filled with reindeer. So I thought, you know what? Maybe it's finally time for me to make a video on a deer. It's kinda ironic that I haven't do so. Well, aside from the Shikanoko video that is. So, let me brought up the question. What exactly is reindeer? Now, everyone basically knows about reindeer, or at least they have heard of reindeer. However, when you delve deep into the science, reindeer is actually quite complicated. The reason why is quite simply because reindeer is the most studied deer in the world. We got tons of information about reindeer, but that's also why things got complicated. For this video, I'll try to make it easy to understand. So, reindeer in general can be found throughout the northern region. However, people in the North America usually call them caribou. Reindeer is typically the European name. Okay, that's easy, right? American, caribou, European, reindeer. But when I was an undergraduate student, a question came to my mind. Why do Americans call Santa's reindeer reindeer? Why don't they call them Santa's caribou? So apparently, Americans called the semi-domestic one reindeer. The wild ones, they call them caribou. Please correct me if I'm wrong though. I am not American after all. Now, the classic classification grouped them together in one species, Rangifer tarandus. Rangifer is apparently taken from old French rangier, which is the name used for this animal. Meanwhile, Tarandos is the name used by Aristotle and Theoprastus. So basically, both epithet means reindeer. However, several suggestions were made to separate some population into its own species. In 2022, a comprehensive review article was published and it showed there are six different species of rangifer that should be valid. Or, at the very least, six different clades. Those are Rangifer Greenlandicus, Rangifer Platyrincus, Rangifer Caribou, Rangifer Arcticus, Rangifer Tarandus, and Rangifer Fenicus. I'm gonna talk about them one by one. But first, let's talk about the general characteristics first. Oh wait, I almost forgot. The deer family, Carfidae, are generally divided into two groups, two subfamilies. The first one are New World Deer, either called Capreolinae nowadays, or in the past, Odokoilene, depends on who you ask. The other one is Old World Deer, Carfine. Reindeer are classified in the Capreolini subfamily, so it's technically a New World Deer. Okay now, transition into the next section. The difference between the two can be found on their skeletal morphology. The most recognizable one is their legs. Carfine have plesiometacarpal legs while Capreolinae have telemetacarpal legs. Plesiometacarpal means their lateral metacarpal are located on the proximal end. Meanwhile, telemetacarpal means their lateral metacarpal are located on the distal end. Now, since they are deer, they have the generic deer build. Four relatively long but slender legs, dark rhinarium, that is the fleshy part on the tip of their snout by the way, and, of course, the unique trait of deer, antlers on males. However, unlike other extant species of deer, females also grow antlers regularly, albeit relatively smaller and simpler. By regularly, I mean that's their regular condition. It's normal for reindeers. I have to clarify that because females of other deer species can grow antlers if they have hormonal imbalance. Their antlers help them dig for food. For females, their antlers also help defend themselves, especially during winter. Their antlers could vary a lot between population, but in general, they have a forward-facing brow and main beams that palmate and branch towards the end. Some populations also have forward-facing bay. That's if we're using the traditional terms. In 2020, Samejima suggested a different way of viewing antlers morphology. So if we're gonna use that, 
reindeer's antlers are completely unique among the deer. The extant deer, I mean. Those that live in tundra usually have greater antler, with a specially palmating and shuffle-like brow. Meanwhile, those that live in woodlands usually have shorter but stronger and more branched antlers designed for combat. Their fur are two-layered, soft woolly undercoat and long hairy overcoat. They have large and widely splayed hoof adapted for traveling on snow and swimming. During winter, their hooves are hardened to help dig for food and traverse icy terrain. It will soften in spring to assist traversing the wet and soft substrate. Their renarium is mostly covered in hair to protect them from the cold. Alright, now let's talk about the sixth group. Let's start with the Greenland caribou, Rangifer Greenlandicus. As its namesake, they can be found in Greenland, to be precise, Western Greenland. They are similar to the mainland barren ground caribou, but they have over 44% microsatellite genetic difference. Hence, they are considered a distinct group. The specific data for them are scarce for now. Next is the mainland barren ground caribou, Rangifer arcticus. Their size could vary, but relatively small compared to other North American caribou. Adult males weigh around 150 kilograms while females are around 90 kilograms. This includes the Piri caribou, an endangered subspecies which is the smallest North American caribou, only 1.4 to 1.7 meters long and 60 to 110 kilograms. However, it also includes Osborne caribou, which could reach up to 340 kilograms. The barren ground on their name refers to their habitat, which is mostly tundra, only few trees. Their neck has whitish color, while the rest are brown. The winter coat is generally lighter, while the summer coat is darker. Next is woodland caribou, Rangifer caribou. As its namesake, they prefer to live in boreal forests, aka taiga. They stay in the woodland throughout the year. They are quite big, averaging 180 kilograms for males, but up to 270 kilograms. Aside from their neck, the white coloration on their fur can also be found on their side, usually behind their forelegs. The true woodland caribou have darker winter coat compared to other caribou, while other subspecies may have lighter coat with more white patches. Now, let's jump to Europe. First is the tundra reindeer, Rangifer tarandus. This is the one that was domesticated into the, well, domestic reindeer. Size-wise, they are similar to the barren ground caribou. Oh, and also, similar habitat too, as its namesake, tundra. This is the most widespread reindeer in Europe. Next is the forest reindeer, Rangifer fennicus. This can be found in forests throughout Finland and western Russia. They are relatively big, around 180 to 220 centimeters long. Males weigh around 150 to 250 kilograms, while females weigh around 100 kilograms. Their striking trait is their long legs, which help them traverse deep snow. Their antlers are also relatively narrow, so they don't get stuck when traversing woodlands. Last is the Svalbard reindeer, Rangifer platyrinkus. They can be found on the Svalbard archipelago of Norway. They have short legs and rounded head. They are relatively small size. Males only around 60 to 90 kilograms, while females are around 50 to 70 kilograms. However, they have thicker fur which makes them look stocky. Next, let's talk about their lifestyle. But before that, reindeer are adapted to live in the cold northern region. They are mostly generalist herbivore that eat shrubs, grasses, and even fungi. During winter, they mostly eat lichen. However, they may opportunistically eat carcasses or even prey on small animals. They also gnaw on bones and lake salts. Aside from the morphological adaptation that I mentioned in the characteristic section, they have enlarged nasal passage that can warm inhaled air before passing to the lungs. These happen with countercurrent heat exchange, 
aka CCHE. That's when the arteries are located side by side with the vein, exchanging heat between the two blood and minimizing heat loss. Oh, their legs also have CCHE by the way. That's why having slender legs are beneficial for them. They are generally silent, but may snort or grunt. When they walk, they make clicking sounds that may help them communicate and locate each other. The sound originated from the tendon of their knees. On males, antlers usually start growing in March to April. Meanwhile, female grows antler in May or June, but can even grow them way later towards fall. For males, antlers development usually finished in the summer. Then velvet shedding starts around August to early September. Rotting season usually starts during September for reindeer. Meanwhile, caribou usually rot on October. Males usually cease to eat during peak rotting season. There are generally two mating systems. One is called the harem defense mating system, where a male can mate with multiple females, hence male-to-male -male combat are intense and those with large antlers are especially dominant. The other is individual mate tending, where one male pair with one female. Those that live in woodlands usually have harem defense system, while those that live in tundra usually have individual mate tending system. Males set their antlers soon after, usually on November. And yes, compared to other deer species, their males have significantly more time of no antler period. Meanwhile, females retain their antlers longer. Females with calves usually retain their antler until slightly after they give birth, which is usually in May, so they almost have antlers for the whole year. Normally, females gave birth to only one newborn at a time, but synchronized birthing often occurs in herds to avoid getting singled out by predators. Newborns are able to forage at around one and a half months old but they will still suckle on their mother for another year. Sexual maturity is reached at around 3 to 4 years old for females and 4 to 5 years old for males. They can live for tough and up to 16 years. Some populations are migratory and can travel up to 5,000 kilometers. Some only migrate slightly, while some don't migrate at all. Reindeer evolved at least 2 million years ago. Environmental DNA analysis had shown that reindeer exist in Greenland from early Pleistocene, around 2 million years ago. Rangiver Tarandus constantini was described from Central European late Pleistocene deposits. They have small nasal cavity which might indicate they are not yet adapted for the cold condition. A skull fragment with rather thin and cylinder-shaped antlers was found in Susenborn, Germany dating to Middle Pleistocene, around 680 to 620,000 years ago. This was named Rangifer tarandus tadelmanni, but it is now thought to be closely related to Rangifer arcticus. During the Ries glaciation, around 300 to 130,000 years ago, Rangifer fossils become frequent, which indicates they are thriving during the cold glaciation period. Since old times, Humans have been hunting reindeer for food. Reindeer can be found depicted in cave painting. Reindeer had been important for the life of people in the northern region. Indigenous North Americans like the Inuit of Canada have been living with caribou. There is even a group called the Caribou Inuit. They use reindeer not only for food, but also materials, including for clothing. Caribou fur is their preferred clothing material because it's good at keeping them warm. In Europe, they not only eat reindeer's meat, but also milk them and consume reindeer dairy product. They also use reindeer to pull sled. It is known that reindeer had been domesticated in Northern Europe in at least two different spots, Fenoscandia and Western Russia. It might also happen separately in Eastern Russia. The oldest evidence of reindeer management was sled runners and harness part found in Siberia, dating back to 1500 BC, which is way later than most domestic animals, but still quite the history. Reindeer domestications are usually attributed to the Sami, Nenets, and Yakuts people. 
Apparently, during World War II, the Nenets people helped the Soviet army transport food, ammunition, and even bring wounded soldiers back to safety. In Finland, reindeer are depicted in several coat of arms. There's even a coat of arms depicting a fish with reindeer antlers, which is quite something. The domestic reindeer in the USA are brought from Europe in the last century. Not only that, the US government also brought some Sami people to herd the reindeer. However, in 1937, the Reindeer Act was passed, prohibiting the ownership of reindeer herds by non-native American. Domestic reindeer were sold or abandoned in Alaska. They then interbreed with native caribou population. Even if feral domestic reindeer are removed, introgression may persist even after several generations. Even to this day, there are many reindeer herders in the northern region, especially in Europe, but also Alaska. Reindeer hides are still a popular and profitable product of the north after all. Now, let's talk about their association with Christmas, because why not? Even though nowadays it's widely known that reindeer are associated with Christmas, the association started relatively recent. The first appearance of reindeer pulling Santa's sled is in the poem A Visit from Santa Claus in 1823. In that poem, the eight reindeer are present. They are called Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Dunder, and Blixem. Donner and Blixem are later changed to Donner and Blitzen. So yes, no Rudolph. Rudolph first appeared in 1939. Oh, and before I wrap it up, I have one story. Several years ago, my friend randomly asked me, is it true that all Santa's reindeer are females? And I asked, why did you think so? And then she said, she found out male reindeer already shed their antler by December. So Santa's reindeer must be females. That remark was funny to me. While yes, the thing about antlers is true, why is that the questionable one? Shouldn't you ask how they are able to fly before asking about their antler? If they can fly, surely it's not outrageous for them to have antlers, right? So yeah. Oh, by the way, Obzu from the future here. During editing, I was looking for Santa's reindeer image, right? Then I stumbled upon this article on Google search. It said Alaska Department of Fish and Game, so it catches my attention. I was like, wait, what? There is another new group of reindeer? I gotta redo the script and recording. Then I click the article, and it's just a joke from the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. Good one, I guess. Reindeer are an important part of the Northern culture, which is why, like I said, there are tons of research on reindeer. You can even find several articles this year. And you can see that various research are consistently published every year. So yeah, we'll most likely discover something new about reindeer in the future. Who knows what it'll be? For now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, if you are currently on vacation, then hey, Enjoy your vacation. Even if not, hope you have an enjoyable holiday. Or even if you don't have a holiday for some reason, same goes. Enjoy your day. <laughs>